every week I get the question, Dylan, what are you up to? What do you have going on in your garden? And I don't really like to show my stuff as much as I like to show you all how to do things in your gardens. If a garden tour can encourage someone to get up and get growing, then by all means, let's see what I have happening in this garden here. Hello everyone, thank you all so very much for joining in. This is Dylan from the Trini Gardeners channel and I'm going to try to not keep you all very long for this video. But in these garden tours, things tend to go a little bit, get a little bit out of hand. Um, I'm going to try to keep that under control this time. Uh, we're going to start up here in my little bit of a, a mini sunflower patch. If you think these sunflowers are looking unhappy, that's because they are. One thing that we're experiencing right now, we're in April that I'm filming this video here, April the 19th and it's been a very dry and hot couple of months um, march was exceptionally dry a part of february was the same so i've been watering these plants sometimes two even three times a day because of how hot it's been and that's unprecedented for me i don't like to overwater plants because i do believe in having your plants push their roots to get moisture so we're not just putting moisture at the top level there but we're making sure the plant is somewhat put under some stress so that it'll be forced to push those roots but i just can't do that these sunflowers i mean i watered them this morning um now it's about um, 2 p.m about no about 3 p.m sorry and um these sunflowers they're still i mean they're already looking droopy they're looking so so sad this one just opened up maybe two three days ago and it's already time to close down because of just so much stress that they're under because of how hot it's been so um that's one thing that I'm seeing in the garden here that I do need to water plants a lot more than I am accustomed to because of how hot the place has been and I don't know what you know what April um, and the end of April into May is going to be like but if it's anything I'll encourage you all in every of my green garden that I say to water two to three times a week right now you can't do that you have to water maybe once every day for most of your plants and you know check your plants the most important thing is to listen to your plants I'm looking at these leaves right now, they do look kind of droopy. So that means that even I water this morning, I can't not water this afternoon. I have to water again to make sure that these sunflowers can last for as long as possible. Sunflowers generally don't stay very, very long anyway, but having less moisture is going to just force the process of them going to seed faster. And uh, I don't want that. I want to enjoy these sunflowers for as much as I can, even if that's an extra week. If watering can help me do that, then I'll definitely go for it. The sunflowers that I just showed you all are planted in ground over there. And these are a set of sunflowers that I have. These are the branching sunflower. So they don't just produce one head. You can see multiple heads. And each one will open. Each one will produce seed for you. Um, I have these in containers here. One gallon containers. Generally, whenever I have extra plants and I have some soil that is just not the best quality, I will tend to plant something like sunflowers because they don't require too much. A nutrition to grow nice and big and strong and do you know really nice addition and then after when these plants have produced and they dried up then you can mulch them down and they make for really good compost so I add them to the compost bin over there and i'm able to get even better quality compost because of the just the organic structure of sunflowers and branching sunflowers is a good way to go i have some sweet potatoes that i harvested a few weeks ago actually and I just leave it out in the sun. Um, I didn't mean to show this in the video, but I have had it outside here. And um, they didn't grow very, very big, like fingers. But um, I do believe in leaving your super potatoes out. At least uh, I try to keep it for about a month somewhere in the sun. And I find that that really brings that texture to be nice, soft, and it becomes really, really sweet. <coughs> Okay, we're in the front garden here um, i just realized that i wanted more space to plant more stuff i generally try to avoid putting things in the front garden just you know just out to the eyes of this passerby and that kind of thing but um you know what if somebody wants to jump over and take some lettuce or whatever i mean whatever you know at least i get the pleasure of having grown it and um, you know put it on film i put it on video there's a lot of things here like i'll show you all these some these um this lettuce here like i grew this to eat but because we have so much lettuce, I just left it and started to bolt, obviously. I have, you can look at the link here on um, what bolting is and why I'm so nonchalant about it. Because I have other lettuce and this is going to give me seeds. So it's not a loss situation at all. At least I don't see it as a loss. 
you can eat these leaves. Somebody was passing by and they were saying like, uh, you know, you need to pick your lettuce. And um, they were telling me that it will, this is bulletin. And I, I was really happy that they cared enough to come and tell me what it was. And, um, you know, I was happy to talk with them a little bit about it. They were asking me if you can still eat the leaves and you can. It's just not the best, right? It's bitter. It's tough. Um, if you like really bitter stuff, go for it. It's not inedible. It's just that um, I wouldn't eat this for fun. Uh, it's as if I have to. But um, at this point, hit the lettuce, it's just bolting. Um, some other stuff that I have in the front garden here. Wow, that is really bitter. Some other stuff in the front garden I have. I don't know if you're seeing this. This is my ox heart tomato. Um, that's pretty much dead at this point here. It produced, and I'm just leaving everything that's on it for seed at this point. Um, behind me, I have four different types of tomatoes. So I have some Roma tomatoes that's growing up all in containers because in front here it's just fully concreted out. I have some Roma tomatoes. On the other side, I have black vernissage. Behind me here, I have a big rainbow tomato, which in my very first garden tour, I showed you all different types of tomatoes that I had growing um, at another location. And I showed you all what the big rainbow looks like. It's yellow, sort of orange. I also have a Cherokee purple, two Cherokee purples actually, that are growing up here. These Cherokee purples, as opposed to the last time that I showed you all, these are rain containers. So I find that the fruit is a lot smaller, but it's Cherokee purple nonetheless. And it's one of the best slicing tomatoes that you can get. In front, I also have some brassicas. So you'll see behind me here, I have some cauliflower, I have some broccoli, and I have one cabbage. I had another cabbage, I had done it in pairs. So two cauliflower, two broccoli, two cabbages. But the, one of the cabbages got like, I think it's club root virus, where the roots just kind of club together. They don't grow anymore. They just become like, sort of like clubbed, and the plant just kind of dies. Um, doesn't really die, it just stays in this weird looking shape. And it's just not fun at that point here. This cherry tomato here grew up, this cherry tomato grew up at the exact same time as these other tomatoes, but it was the runt. It just didn't catch on properly, but I believe it had potential and I left it. I had the space for it and it's coming up now. I see some little bit of flowers. I'm not going to let it go to fruit. It should put a little more structure before it goes to fruit, but I'm happy to have it. Over here, I also have a marigold. This is a cool variety of marigold. Um, I wish I had gotten it in bloom, but I'll show you all if you just keep on following on the Instagram, the TikTok, the Facebook. You'll see some pictures, some videos of the marigold. Over here, I have a little experiment. First time doing it actually, where I pick the top of this pepper seedling to see if it would produce more lead heads, and it did. So this is where I topped it. I cut the top out of this pepper seedling and here is a new lead head well one second lead head so that's really really cool for it to be growing out two lead heads like that over here i also have a pepper plant that's growing inside of a bucket right it just started to all ripen at the same time you know you'd wish it ripen one by one so you could just enjoy one or two too but everything wants to ripen at the same time so I'll be picking it and probably using it to make a little bit of pepper sauce or something like that. Add it up to whatever I have before. Now here's the actual hanging PVC planter that is actually doing its job of hanging and being a PVC planter. You can see, um, well, I've got some pak choy. Everything looks really dry and droopy. It's fine once I water it in and I pick it morning time or late afternoon. It all bounces back, so it's fine. We've got some scythe, bronze head lettuce, pak choy more scythe, the same trying to grow onto the hanging PVC plant. The same is on, as I've told you all before, a different level. It's just, we've picked just so much, so much a same. Um, this is the same tree that's a bit newer to the production. It's been here for about two, three months producing. That one over there has been producing for about four or five months since just around Christmas time last year. It started to produce and it just hasn't stopped. It slowed down a little bit last month. It just picked back up again. It, I've been threatening to cut it down the longest while because I want to plant some squash in that area. Um, like I mean, I've never been the biggest fan of the same, but you all know. And um, it's picking up so much of space. This clothesline here, I had to save it because this same branch had started taking over the entire thing. It was taking over the entire space. You really, if you want to keep your same, you do have to 
kind of tailor it back and keep it in line because it will just do whatever it wants and just grow all over the place this entire um, wall over here um, i don't know if you all will have probably seen the video already i did do a video specifically talking about transforming this wall into what it is now this green wall of tomatoes as opposed to just a naked wall of concrete um, but the same was not even allowing that i had to cut back the same to make sure that i had the space to have these tomatoes growing up i did allow one line of the same to go around at this height so that the tomatoes could grow up and while the tomatoes are growing up the same could be there and i could get some same from it that happened i got the same from it but the tomatoes have now taken over the entire area and um, the same had to be cut back so this same is a bit more tame than what i had before even like all here i'll just come in and just like pull off a part of the vine because the, the plant is fine it's very very resilient it's very very strong I could beat up this plant as much as I want. It will come back. It like it not likes, but it can handle some abuse. Um, but at the same time, um, I don't just do it because it's fun. It hurts me sometimes to take off branches that I do know will produce food, and you never want to have it on your record that you're destroying food. But if you want to grow interesting things, sometimes you do need to make a bit of a sacrifice in your garden. So I'm not just destroying it because I don't want it. I'm destroying parts of it because I do want to have other things in the garden itself. There's an overview of the tomatoes in this area here. This is the money maker tomato. It's a nice medium sized tomato. Very nice and crisp skin. That's really, really sweet. I like it. It's almost like a soft shell. When you bite into these tomatoes, it's really nice and rigid. The skin is, but then you bite in and it's just a burst of juices, a nice tangy sweet flavor. Love the money maker tomato. This is tomato that unfortunately got pretty dinged up because of loose. Um, you see, like there is a bit of life, but um, I don't know. There is fruit on it. This is the small cherry tomato. Right, that's just what the packet says. Um, it looks, I don't know. I don't know what to make out of it. It doesn't look like it's dying entirely, but some of the branches are definitely gone. This one here is just a regular cherry tomato. I'm just really happy about it and I'm really extra grateful that Lucy didn't destroy this plant because I really probably would have cried. Almost cried for this one. Definitely would have cried for this one here. Um, these bags, you all know that I use these bags. You can get them like prayers, different events. Whenever you go and you get sweets to use it to protect your tomatoes because once they turn color, um, birds and whatnot will come in. Once they get the smell of these man-made materials, they will go away and also they can't access it but this bag also allows air to pass through and water to not become stagnant water can freely pass through so that's what you want something that'll protect your tomatoes but allow air and water to pass through love the color on these this is another small cherry tomato the one that i told you all that loose uprooted i love how red this gets it's just incredible the color on this and there's nothing that tastes better than a tomato that's ripened on the vine and grown 100 percent organic just starting to ripen and there's another view of the same zeal is the same in the garden here so it takes over the entire clothesline so you can't hang anything and it's still producing new blooms new flowers and it always has bees over here um, pollinating just so much the same i want to actually show you all the roots or the stem of the same it blows my mind just how thick and strong and hard this root is well the stem of the same is but this is really how you could expect for jack and the beans to have a stalk that's so so thick that you can go up into the sky because that's huge it's massive even this here i think is just incredible because you think same the vine is like this all the way through but no look at this tiny little thing and then look at this massive trunk of the same vine that's incredible and even this hard soil which you all know how hard my soil is look at the same roots over here just digging through that soil going all the way through that's how powerful roots in some of these plants are here i have some carrots that i recently germinated inside of this pvc old um, pipe and um, i just let it germinate let it come out to this point here and then i'll pick and choose how many i can keep i can't grow all of them inside here because space when they get to about this size here so i will pick out i'll try to probably keep about four or maybe five depending on the spacing inside each of these containers 
This one is even less because the germination didn't go all the way through. We germinate so many because carrot seeds do give a bit of a hard time sometimes to germinate. So it's better for me because seeds aren't very expensive for carrots um, to just put a bunch of seeds, let all of them germinate so that if 50% doesn't germinate, you still have the other 50%, which is a good bit of seeds. And then you can pick out whatever you don't want. This one here, I'll probably keep this about three, maybe one on the side, one from the middle here, and then one from the side here. So it's evenly spaced. Very important to have your carrots nice and evenly spaced out to give it enough space to grow down and not be stressed or cramped. Over here, I space these carrots out. Um, these are let go a little bit closer because these are regular sized down for carrots, which are bigger carrots. No, I think this is the old season carrots. It's a seed packet from New Zealand um, that a lot of agro shops have and even hard when you've seen it. Um, I can't remember the name of the brand, but um, any hard way you go in, just ask to have a seed section and see if they have any seeds. Over here, these are ladyfinger carrots um, planted from seed as well. And so I put them in a little bit tighter. shallow so I said you know what let me try growing some beets inside of it doesn't mean that beets because they grow like that they do have to have something shallow but I'll grow beets just for this just for the leaves I love beet leaves the foliage it is so nice and sweet just sauté down with some onions some tomatoes um, this bit on top here there's some common onion that I put um, just about a week ago this is the red globe beet root um, it's not a good idea all the time to put your beets so close together. These are about four or five that's planted together. But for foliage, it's fine. If you want to get the beet itself, the root, the tuber, then, you know, space them out. And in this space here, I probably put just one, two, maybe three, all right? Like this here. I mean, if the foliage you grow up, you have a tire with some celery that I've been harvesting from for the past few months, actually, just taking out whatever I need. Good as ever in probably just about two three inches of soil directly on the same concrete that we have over here isn't that amazing how you can grow like that that's really really cool over here i have a broccoli in a bucket i just have to sit out the main head remember i leave the side shoots because they do produce a little head for you in the future this head is very tiny and over here we're going to have a little head as well um, so then i'll be able to get another harvest of the broccoli instead of just taking out everything I'm cutting it all the way down as you would do with something like cabbage. It's a baby cabbage over here. This tomato was attacked by a tomato hornworm. So the marigolds in the garden weren't enough to keep the hornworm at bay. Um, over here I have some lettuce. More bronze head lettuce growing inside of this little container here. These I planted from seedling. And they didn't really grow very, very well I find. Because um, they've been here as long as some of the other big lettuce that I'm ready to harvest. So. I'll probably just harvest them out. Here I have a little relationship between this cabbage that's almost ready to harvest. And I this is some kind of bean. This is either a same or a um, human wing bean. It's some kind of bean that the seed obviously just dropped inside here and germinated on its own. So it came off as a volunteer. And only when I pruned back the leaves from this cabbage this morning, the leaves over there, that I realized that um, there was a plant growing inside here. So we'll see what ends up happening once i have this out this cabbage i'm going to want back this bucket so i'm going to have to try to transplant that bean if i want to keep it over here i have two more tomatoes in containers i have a it's a black vernissage tomato right um i showed you all a black vernissage in front that i planted before this is a seedling that's coming up and this here is a white cherry tomato i think this one over here that got attacked is also a white cherry tomato and you know I like the white cherry tomato they're nice and um, very very fruity closest thing to a grape that you're going to get in Trinidad I do have some other things in the garden but it'll just take a lot of time and I don't see it as being super important for instance I have some containers here with some celery some sives some broccoli struggling in the sun some lettuce let me show you all this lettuce why I was telling you the other ones are looking really small I look at this lettuce planted in the same one gallon container and this one just took off 
I think it's because this one is not getting as much heat stress as the other two because this one is a mini Zabuka tree. So I might have to look into that and plant my lettuce at least now this time of the year somewhere where we don't have as much sun um, for that heat stress. Planted out some sweet peppers just this past weekend here. You like my burger below? Inside a bucket. You don't need to have big lawn to have nice plants. You already saw the harvest video of the sweet potatoes from this area here. I've planted back some slips. They're struggling to catch because of how hot it's been. But I am trying. Um, some of these slips have been catching. And I will try to cover this with sweet potato vines before the rainy season starts. Because already there's grass at the come up here. And this whole area becomes full of grass. And rather than be full of grass, I would like to be full of sweet potato vines. That I can cut back and then get a harvest or something rather than something useless in the backyard. Just stick with me and you'll see over here. This basil has been going for months and months and I've just been topping it. So topping just means that you come in wherever it looks like it's going to seed. Over here, these are flowers that are wanting to form. So don't allow that unless you want to get seed. But I'm assuming that you want to get basil. So top it. Take that off. Smell it. it, smells really nice, throw it away, if you don't really have use for it, take off the tops and even these here, the very top here, you take off the tops and then that sends the hormones back down the vine and allows it now to branch out and you get more branches. So you get more basil, really good for keeping pests away, you can make little mixes with this, just mix this with a bit of oil or even some peppermint and some water, a little bit of dishwashing liquid, good to go. You can spray that in any of your plants, you know, but use carefully, you don't want to hurt your plants. And as well, in terms of eating, I love to make pesto. So this is the same basil that I've been using over and over to make pesto in the garden. In the kitchen, sorry. Some honorary mentions. This, I don't really consider it to be part of the garden, even though it is. Um, but because it's a permanent fixture, I don't really consider it to be part of anything that I grew. But we do have the governor plum in bloom. You all remember that I had some body growing up on the tree a few months ago. And um, the tree is as fine as ever. Governor plum, really happy to have it, love it in chow. I prefer the local plum to be quite fair, but I'm happy to have governor plum coming in. As well as the most important fruit crop that we have in this garden here coming in. So, so happy, impatient, but trying to be patient until these babies are ready for harvesting. More videos on these on TikTok are going to be coming in. Julie started off really, really well, but it's slowed down now. There's more flowers on it, so we'll see what ends up happening with the julies and there we go we're finishing up almost exactly where we started i really hope that you enjoyed this video but more importantly i hope that you've learned something from this video and i hope that it's probably going to encourage you or motivate you to start your own garden or to continue gardening any of the crops most of the crops that you've seen here just search up on youtube between the garden and just write the name of the crop like the trini gardener cabbage and you're going to see the green guide or any other videos that i have maybe harvesting a crop like that if you want more information on that specific crop I try to keep it short. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being by the time I'm finishing um, the editing and all of that. But I hope that I didn't bore you all. And, you know, I really hope, more importantly, that this is going to really push you and push somebody that you know. You can feel free to share this video. I have them help them, just encourage them to become more self-sustainable, grow their own food in their backyard. Things that you never probably thought you'd be able to grow on concrete in a container. Yes, you can grow it. Just Look at the green guides and try it out for yourself. Don't worry about failing. I think it's 90% failure, but that 10% is so, so worth it because you learn so, so much. Nothing is, end up going to being, nothing is going to end up being a failure. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. See what content comes out in the Training Gardens Garden. And feel free to tag us on any of those platforms because we're so happy to see what you all have going on in your garden spaces. Remember, as always, this has been the Love on the Training Gardens channel reminding you to get up and get green. Take care.